Good morning to all of you here in the United States. Good afternoon to all of you in Europe. I'm Karen Donfried with GMF, and I'm delighted that you're joining us for this event about the Slovak government's efforts to strengthen democracy and combat corruption. I am thrilled to be partnering with the Embassy of the Slovak Republic here in Washington, DC on this event. And a big thank you to the ambassador. This is a remarkably timely event because in case you didn't see it, this morning, the US Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, designated the former Prosecutor General Turnka of the Slovak Republic for involvement in significant corruption. I am looking now at the statement that was put out earlier this morning, which says that the former prosecutor general was involved in corrupt acts that undermine the rule of law and the Slovak public's faith in their government's democratic institutions, officials, and public processes. The designation reaffirms the US commitment to combating corruption in Slovakia and will prevent the former prosecutor general as well as his son from entering the United States. The United States, it says here, continues to stand with the people of Slovakia in their fight against corruption. There really is no better person to talk about this set of issues than Slovakia's Minister of Justice, Maria Kolikova. We are thrilled that she will be joining us. At this very moment, she is in the parliament because there is a critical debate about prolonging the state of emergency in Slovakia related to the COVID-19 pandemic. She will be joining us shortly but what we decided to do was start with a little bit of laying the land with two of the other experts from GMF that we have who are gonna participate in the conversation this morning. And I'm really delighted to have my colleagues, Jonathan Katz, who's a senior fellow and director here at GMF, and Josh Rudolph, who is our in-house expert on anti-corruption to be part of this conversation. So the three of us are gonna set the scene for the minister then to come in and share her reflections on the important work she's been doing over the past year on these issues in Slovakia. And Jonathan, if I can start with you, this event is timely not only because of, of the designation that we heard about from the State Department this morning, yeah. but also because earlier this week on, on February 21st, we marked the third anniversary of the killing of investigative journalist Jan Kusiak and his fiance. And as we all know, Jan Kusiak, the focus of his investigative journalism was corrupt practices in Slovakia. Those murders three years ago triggered enormous nationwide protests condemning corruption in Slovakia. So Jonathan, just give us a sense of what's been happening in Slovakia. Yeah, well, first, I also want to join you in thanking the, the uh, Slovak embassy and, and the justice minister, who I know is, is dealing with, I think, the, the most difficult of issues that all governments are dealing with globally, including here in Washington. And, and I think the challenges that you see in Slovakia um, on issues of corruption and rule of law are challenges that, that are global. Um, are also of, of acute interest here in Washington. And I know uh, Josh will pick up on, on these themes when he speaks, uh, but you're right about the impact of, of the two year anniversary um, and obviously the issues of both corruption and rule of law and restoring trust in society's trust within the judiciary, uh, within government is something that Slovakia has been at the forefront uh, leading really over the past year. And I recall when the government uh, that the justice minister is part of right now uh, was, was uh, sworn in or brought in. I remember the pictures last March. It was, I think, maybe the, one of the first governments that, was, that had come in that was all masked up uh, dealing with COVID right away. Um, and this government in which the justice minister is part of 
um, really ran uh, multiple parties running on an anti-corruption uh, strategy and platform to strengthen rule of law, uh, some to address the challenges uh, connected to uh, these murders that took place um, and, uh, and this government over the past year, uh, from what others are you know, looking outside in, has been a really uh, an incredible effort to try to you know, restore uh, trust in the judiciary and restore trust in the faith of, of uh, the population uh, and address corruption. And I think that there's been a number of efforts underway uh, reform packages. Um, I know that the the justice minister will walk through, you know, what what's taken place, uh, including areas that have been um, successful challenges, and of course, they're doing this all in the middle of of, of a pandemic. Uh, and Slovakia has been particularly hard hit recently. Um, and as we know, this the 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 various both strains but challenges have really uh, really. Uh, both the waves have hit at different times and spaces. So uh, I, th I think there's, there's that component to it, but also uh, when we look at this conversation today, we're also gonna be talking to the justice minister about the, the external uh, uh, efforts as well, uh, both within the EU um, and also uh, the upcoming uh, focus from the, the US in terms of democracy summit and a focus on, on corruption as a key component of this. And so the conversation with the justice minister, I, we got notice that um, she, she will be joining shortly. So that's good news. Uh, the conversation is, uh, is about looking internally, uh, but also looking externally. And, uh, and I think that, that I've heard even here in the U.S. with the new administration that the U.S., uh, particularly after the events of, the, of, of January 6th, um, and, and the need to restore confidence in democracy um, and citizen confidence that, that we have to restore that at home, that there is an obligation. And so this government gets high marks, uh, you know, in a year that's been incredibly difficult at moving the ball forward on reforms. Um, you're not going to see uh, these numbers in, for example, Transparency International's indexes yet. But I think what I've seen from the, the minister um, is a very, and from this government, is a very deliberate effort to not try to uh, sugarcoat or put in place reforms that are, that look good, but things that will last, have a lasting impact. Um, and I, what I have noticed too, and I will say this, as somebody who's worked on democracy programs and rule of law programs globally, is that none of this is easy. Um, and in sort of <laughs> moving this forward. So I'm really excited to see the, the minister uh, talk about this because I think it's not only informative for Slovakia, but also for, uh, for the United States and our efforts, efforts on the ground, including a number of new pieces of legislation moving through Congress right now, bipartisan on uh, combating corruption, uh, much of which Josh uh, Rudolph knows about um, and some of the things that have been done even uh, by Congress in the last session to address these issues. And if we can only join uh, our, our two sides together on this, I think Slovakia will be uh, one of the partners I know that this new administration will be looking to, to help carry out uh, not only a domestic but global agenda uh, on these issues. So if I can, I'll send it back to you. I hope I didn't speak too long and I don't wanna steal any, any thunder from the minister who is incredibly articulate and, and can speak to these and adapt that, that, that I think is important for us to understand what's taking place both in Slovakia, but on a global scene. Thanks, Jonathan. I think you've made clear that how the Slovak government deals with these issues around corruption will be an important part of the success of this government. And now I wanna to turn to Josh Rudolph, who is a fellow from Align Finance, in the Alliance for Securing Democracy here at GMF. And Josh, the Slovak Justice Minister will outline the steps that her government is taking, both domestically and in foreign matters to address corruption. And you have recently written a report about the steps the US government and the new administration is taking to combat kleptocracy. And I think what we're gonna do is having let our listeners know that you're gonna share with us 
the U.S. perspective on this, I do see we've now been joined by the Justice Minister. So I think what I may do is turn and introduce her and we can hear the important work she's doing. And then I will turn back to you, Josh. And actually what I'm gonna do after the Justice Minister has spoken is actually hand the baton to Jonathan. And then Jonathan will moderate a conversation between the minister and you, Josh. So we've given all of you a preview of the wisdom that Josh will bring to this conversation. But let me now give a very warm welcome to Slovakia's Minister of Justice, Maria Kolikova. We know you are coming from a very important debate in Parliament about prolonging the state of emergency around COVID-19. We are so grateful that you have made time this morning, well, your afternoon, for this conversation around the important fight you're engaged in in Slovakia against corruption. We talked briefly about the fact that the State Department this morning announced a designation of the former prosecutor general in Slovakia. So the event could not be more timely. But Mr. Kolikova, we are eager to hear about the central role you're playing in Slovakia's efforts to combat corruption, strengthen rule of law, and restore public faith in the judiciary. And I was, of course, looking into your background. And I noted that you are a lawyer by training. You have worked originally in the NGO sector. You've taught law. You have founded your own law firm. You served as state secretary at the Ministry of Defense, not at, at the Ministry of Justice, not once, but twice. And now you are occupying this critical role as Minister of Justice. And you stepped into this position, of course, last year. Um, as we know, corruption is a deadly serious business. And before you joined, we noted that we just marked the third anniversary of the murder of the investigative journalist, Jan Kusiak and his fiance and the incredible outpouring of protest that that sparked in Slovakia. And so I'd like to just ask you a broad question before we go into the conversation. And my broad question is simply, can you share with us the Slovak government's efforts over the last year since you stepped into office and share a little bit the progress you believe you've made in this fight against corruption, but also the big challenges that you're facing. So Mr. Kolikova, a very warm welcome and over to you. Uh, first of all, I would like to, to thank you for the, the possibility to, to participate on, uh, on this panel uh, discussion. Uh, and uh, definitely I'm, I'm very sorry that I'm coming uh, a little bit late, uh, but as all formally I had to wait for another member of the government to uh, that will uh, uh, that will like, that will be in the parliament during the whole debate. So I'm first of all I'm, I'm very sorry. Uh, and uh, as I see from uh, from your from your welcome <laughs> welcome welcome speech, uh, so you you, uh, you went a little bit into the, my uh, background. <laughs> And yes, I am here. Well, actually, I am uh, in the well. I would say close uh, to the justice uh, sector the, already the fourth time, because the first time uh, when I decided to leave the third sector, the NGO sector, I became uh, the first director of so-called legal aid center in Slovakia. And it's a state institution that was uh, that was established in 2006. Uh, so I, I, I was uh, nominated by uh, uh, by the Minister of Justice of Daniel Lipschitz, that is actually presently the uh, special prosecutor uh, that is combating the corruption. But why I wanted to say that is that. Uh, well, I was uh, already three times by the government that, uh, uh, well, two times, unfortunately, uh, when the government fall. Uh, so it was a government of, uh, I would say, of the democratic coalition of Zurinda. 
then that, that was the second the first time when I was the director of the legal aid center and of course then uh, uh, very quickly I had just to finish <laughs> my my function and to leave it uh, and uh, the second time it was the government of Radichova uh, when it when the government fought so I mean it was another government fall and uh, the the third time when I was the second time state secretary I mean it was just uh, the last government and I had just to leave because the Ministry of Justice was changed uh, and uh, just the, the values that I believe they are important for the reform of justice were somehow very different of the new minister that uh, that came uh, to this position. So I had to leave the government in, um, in the summer 2018. And fortunately, I became now the Minister of Justice of the government that uh, uh, promised uh, to the people uh, that is really willing to fight the corruption. And I would say that really uh, this promise is something uh, uh, that is, uh, that is like a glue of our coalition. As well, I will say in hard times, <laughs> when we say to each other, it's just our common fight against the corruption that really is gluing up us together. And uh, yeah, that's the mission. And, uh, uh, and my mission is as the Minister of Justice is uh, to perform the, the big reform of the justice. And I'm saying really openly that it's a big reform because it's, um, well, uh, the justice sector is waiting for years for uh, for a reform, and, and uh, there is just such big need that uh, uh, that I I just cannot do it in a small manner. <laughs> so I just see what has to be done. So yes, I mean it's it's pretty uh, ambitious, but that's just what is needed, and I would like to do it. I just, I don't want to take all the floor, so I'm just waiting. Well, we wish you very much success with that. And uh, now I will pass the, the baton to Jonathan to moderate the conversation. Yeah. Great. And Minister, uh, welcome. And we really, um, no, no need on your end to, uh, to apologize. You're taking care of uh, really critical issues in Slovakia. And we, 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 uh, we appreciate you taking time to speak with us because I think there's a, a great deal of interest um, as you know, both on, on both sides of the Atlantic and efforts to both, you know, to combat corruption, to strengthen rule of law. Uh, this is particularly acute in the United States uh, as well. And, and recent events remind us of how important uh, this component is uh, to all, uh, to all citizens and to all democracies. And so I wanted to maybe, if you can, and, and briefly just Talk about it. We we know that the the background of the government in place, uh, you know, and your uh, the the policy pledges, as we would say, um, were really to focus on this rule of law and strengthening and, and judicial strengthening, and maybe just walk us through because I I want to just ask us you know ask you how you view the progress so far, and I know I, I've seen sort of numerous statements from you. You're you're not going you're you're going big because there's a number of deep challenges. Um, maybe speak to that, speak to the challenges. We also recognize it's only one year since you have been, less than a year, uh, than you've been uh, in office. Uh, and maybe just speak to, uh, speak to, you know, sort of those, the successes and maybe some of the challenges. And then I will, then we'll widen the scope a little beyond that to, to, to think about more about the, the, the challenges, um, both, your, both regionally and, and globally. Uh, given the interest here in the U.S. as well, given the new administration's focus on combating corruption as a, I, I really would consider it, and I know my colleague Josh Rudolph would, as a number one policy concern of the United States um, is this issue of corruption uh, and of rule of law. So uh, first, I just wanted to ask you about how things stand. Um, and I think it's very instructive, not only for what's happening in Slovakia, but, but also in the United States, in the EU, but also uh, globally. Well, yeah, it's, it's true that uh, uh, when we are talking about uh, the situation uh, uh, in Slovakia, as far as the justice is concerned, the, 
the level of the credibility in the justice system is so low that uh, I don't know if it if it can go even lower. Uh, so it's 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 really a very low percentage of people that they believe in the justice system, and it is because uh, there are numerous cases of uh, of judges uh, uh, against who uh, there is a, a criminal investigation performed, and even I mean there are uh, I'm sorry to say that, but uh, there are more than ten judges who are in custody now. So it's 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 really I mean it's really serious. And uh, uh, from these corruption cases, uh, what the public knows is that th there is a correlation between the judges, uh, lawyers, and even there is connection as well to those who were you know, representatives of uh, as well of the other uh, public powers. So uh, it's it's really correlation of of corruption that 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 went through different. Uh, uh, powers, uh, and uh, this is something that really is attacking the democracy and rule of law principle. Because I mean, when uh, when people uh, when when they are losing um, the the their credibility in the in the state in the system, so of course there is a big uh, uh, risk. That they will try to find um, other securities. So and so, it's, it's now. I would say it's it's really uh, and, and I feel it's a it's a big responsibility now of the government to show the people that the state is ready to secure the the values uh, 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 and that they don't have to to look for other alternatives uh, to the state. And uh, so I, I, I think that that it's it's uh, on one hand it's a special like a special moment of the society uh, when the so society is waiting up for uh, you may say as well for a special manner of the reform. So it's like um, uh, like some light changes are not enough. For the system, so it's it has to be something, I suppose as well as far as the justice that is, is as well uh, uh, a kind of symbol uh, that really these things will be changed and that they 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 can like they can give another chance to the system, uh, and well I, at least I see it like that. Uh, so if if we would go deeply to the reform of the justice. Um, it's not only about the amendment of the constitution, uh, which was adopted by the parliament at the end of the year, uh, where I would say there are two strong um, parts, uh, and one of them is that uh, we decided that composition of judicial council, which is a very important body in the Slav in the Slovak uh, legal system which decides about uh, principal things that concern the judges. For example, who will be the judge, uh, that the disciplinary proceeding will start, uh, about uh, um, the, the, uh, the steps in the career of the judge to go from the lower court to the higher court, etc. And as far as the Judicial Council, we decided that part of the Judicial Council, one half, uh, can be judges, but the other half, there, had, there, there have to be people who are not judges. So it means that that was as well a signal that the judges needs to have a kind of mirror um, uh, to, to to have a uh, really um, feedback from the society uh, uh, to 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 understand uh, as well the other views that that they are critical. Uh, as well to themselves. Another, I would say, very important change was that we decided to establish a uh, uh, supreme court that will be specialized for administrative uh, cases, which maybe is something uh, for you strange to see uh, from the uh, Anglo uh, and from from. 
from real view uh, from United States, as you see the state organs, but here, uh, especially for the country that is the, the country after the communism period, uh, the cases at the court that cause the fight between the citizen and the state, these cases we call as administrative cases. So it's about the, the administrative, we may dispute like, uh, can be dispute, uh, uh, it's a dispute between citizen and, and uh, at a state body about whatever, about uh, taxes, for example. Uh, and so that uh, for these disputes, there need to be really uh, specialized uh, court with uh, people that have really strong authority, credibility. Uh, and uh, now, for example, there is very deep debate uh, about the selection procedure uh, for this uh, for this new body. And it whole I don't want to go very into detail, but what is important is that uh, that that uh, the the substance of this debate is actually I see it like that is about the values in the justice. So. So somehow it, it may be seen from outside like it's uh, these are the details, but actually it's really about the substance uh, where you, you you see that for judges is um, it's uh, very difficult uh, to 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 understand that uh, it's important for public to see who are the personalities, for example, who will go to this new body. And uh, they just wanted to go there like in the shadow that uh, we are part of another court body and we would like just automatically to be there. And there is strong debate about that. So like it seems maybe for you that it's a detail, but it's it goes very deeply in the, the values of, of the just, justice as itself to, to who the judges serve, etc. So uh, I have can I, can I, I, I would say so that the whole procedure, the whole discussions, uh, uh, actually they, they open, it seems to me like a lot of um, mm, lot of uh, spaces uh, of, uh, uh, that were closed and uh, that really open very critical debate about the justice as itself. Yeah, I, I mean, these are all very difficult uh, issues and I wanted to ask you about how, you know, you've talked about but how you're bringing in the, the public to these complex uh, debates and conversations, um, you know, that, that you're having. And, and, you know, because I think that's, um, it's been a, a very challenging issue here to convince, even in the U.S., uh, based on disinformation, uh, based on uh, competing uh, systems, the, the, you know, obviously there was a, a backsliding uh, you know, or, or challenges to the judicial system in Slovakia. Uh, but how are you, how are you doing that? I've seen some interviews that you've given with, uh, with, you know, for example, with AmpChan, but that's, um, but I, I'm just curious how you're bringing in constituencies to deal with this issue, um, to have longer term buy-in on complex issues. Um, and I mean, it was pretty clear that there has been longstanding concern. There were, uh, I think, uh, Karen Donfrey brought up the the the, the murder, the two year anniversary, um, and how Slovaks came to the street. It obviously fueled some of the political change that occurred that brought brought, the, brought you and the new government to power. But how are you communicating it? And I think it's made uh, even more difficult by the COVID situation to do this. So I, I think it's important because I think restoring trust requires that you have buy-in from the public in what you do. And this is for any, you know, for any government. Um, and it's particularly a challenging moment here in the U.S. to, to do this. So maybe just some thoughts on that. And then I, and the, and I want to turn to the, the foreign aspects of corruption. I think yeah, you, you open a, a very difficult dilemma that for as well it is that if, if there is a uh, legitimate space for the government uh, to open a reform when there is such pandemia, because all discussions are more difficult. So, I mean, we need, uh, of course, to use uh, online online debates uh, beside the physical debates, and it's different. So, um, uh, and plus, uh, uh, it is understandable that that as the justice reform that concerned the uh, 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 
54 courts of the first instance in Slovakia, eight appellate courts in Slovakia, uh, as well now the new Supreme uh, Court that, it, that will be specialized for administrative things. So the, the reform is really complex and uh, somehow touches pretty everybody in the system on, on one hand. Uh, and then as it is as well about a uh, new so-called court map. So there will be less courts than before. It touches as well the cities, uh, municipalities, where the court shouldn't be in the future, etc. So, uh, so now I'm talking actually about um, uh, all the uh, key players, I would say, uh, this who you should debate as a government, as a minister of justice, and the debates are more difficult because I mean, uh, and and as well of course performing the discussion is difficult because I mean it's, you want to meet the judges and and um, as well sometimes there are technical uh, troubles to to have really uh, good uh, uh, discussions without any technical obstacles. Uh, so I, 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 as well myself, I am just uh, going always through it. Uh, if it is really um, good time now to propose a reform to the people, to the judges, um, uh, to the society, but uh, I mean, the democracy has to work always. Mm -hmm. And as, as well, we have to respect rule of law always. So, uh, and uh, I see it as a big challenge uh, to try to do my best as well in this hard situation to do the debates, uh, to discuss and to explain uh, the reform. But I came to the point, I, 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 uh, I'm persuaded actually that uh, I have to propose the reform. I have to do my, I have to do my best to implement it because I mean the, Slovakia needs that, and uh, but I, ha I have of course to be more sensible uh, you know, to this difficult situation, and um, maybe as well to give it certain uh, procedures more time. However, I'm I, I get always criticism that there is never enough time for discussion, and I don't discuss enough, and I. On one hand, I understand that. Um, plus, uh, because I mean, the, the reform touches the judges, touches, as I said, a lot of people, um, touches as well the municipalities, and it needs to be well uh, communicated, well explained why it is needed, uh, that it is really needed uh, if you want to have the justice more effective uh, with better quality and with uh, the, most, the obstacles in the system that will be preventive uh, to, the, to the corruption. So uh, I will say it is asking a lot of energy, but I am positive here. And um, to be honest, I, when I'm thinking what is really my goal, I, I'm just going um, I would say even more deeply um, uh, to, I would say to, to I, I, I am persuading myself that the most important is the way how I am doing it. And, uh, and the whole debate that is around that, of course, uh, I have a very concrete plan, what, what, we, what should be the result. But as I am seeing uh, what all it is opening, what all emotions, uh, what all debates actually about the deep values of the justice. Now, it seems to be what is even more important for justice in Slovakia is this discussion, these debates that are around. Uh, and maybe just one comment uh, is that I feel and uh, that I uh, that as we are Slovakia, uh, which is a post-communist country, um, somehow um, and we are in this region when we have uh, 
we are in the family of other post-communist countries, I will say, uh, uh, where they are, um, how to say, several um, proposals, maybe to do it in a more easy manner, um, uh, uh, taking the arguments that we are in a special position we have a, because we, they have a special history. And, uh, uh, and for example, this is for me a risky business. Uh, and I, I, I really try to, to have a very open dialogue with commissioners from the European Commission uh, that I don't want to do it in a, um, uh, in a short way, in an easy way. And that uh, really for me, uh, it is very important the feedback that I have from the um, old democratic countries. However, sometimes it seems to me that they are not enough sensible maybe to our past. However, however, uh, I want to be with them in a, in a, in a family. And, um, uh, and, and so I, I see that this is the way. Uh, and this should be the way for Slovakia. Uh, that uh, I want that they understand why we do it and how we do it, and that we understand each other that it's okay how we do it because it's according to the principle of the rule of law that are common. And I, I, I'm really not very happy uh, with uh, another proposing alternative that uh, the countries. In, in the region where we are, like um, countries uh, of, they have the history of, uh, of communism, that they should have other principles of the rule of law. This is something for me that is unacceptable. I, I'm uh, really not happy that this discussion is even, that was even opened. Uh, uh, and uh, I said that as well to the minister of uh, Hungary in our uh, open dialogue that um, I think it's not good for our future to go this way. I want to, you know, maybe even pick up on that and I'm going to uh, sort of bring, bring Josh into this. First, I want to thank you because I know the, I think your sort of explanation of the challenges in the middle of a pandemic to carry out these hard reforms and sticking to it is really important because the issue of transparency has been a big issue globally around COVID and sort of being clear and engaging um, is a must. And I, I, I think we all know what happens when that isn't the case. And we've seen, you know, how uh, even in the middle of pandemic, that type of approach to governance um, really tends up to, uh, to backfire and has consequences. So I think I deeply appreciate what you're saying, uh, the challenges and also the EU and uh, and the regional challenges. And I wanted to ask about, you know, sort of building out on this issue as well and just the issues of corruption um, and, you know, tools that you, you know, obviously things that are being, uh, that are deployed both in terms of, of uh, foreign uh, impact, uh, both in Slovakia. And as you know, the US has been uh, deeply focused and, and I'm gonna bring Josh into on this uh, and, and it wasn't just this administration, previous concerns too. It's something that's a bipartisan concern is this issue of corruption and how to deal with it. And I'm wondering how that, that foreign lens, and I'll bring Josh in to talk about, because he's written extensively on this. I really, it's sort of laying out a strategy, uh, including with this, the, for, the, for the new administration, but it's also touched on how Congress and, and, and the US institutions are facing it. And I think the EU as well, um, how are you, you know, how, how does this intersect with the work that you're doing and with this government? Because this is, um, this is a challenge. Um, you, you spoke a little bit about uh, regional, uh, re the regional component of it, but maybe you could speak to that. And then Josh, I wanted you to maybe come in and respond to, because you've also talked about, uh, uh, you know, the U.S. is actually thinking right now, maybe on a much more grand strategy um, to approach this issue. And I think what I hear from you too is that, you know, even judicial is, it's local and it's got local context, local flavor. 
Um, Josh has also testified, I think, uh, also in Europe as well, most recently in the fall um, on, on uh, interference in elections. But, but you know, for somebody who's taking on these challenges, you can't ignore, especially in Europe, um, uh, the, the challenges of corruption and malign actors um, impacts us all. And, and, and so I just, uh, from your stance, where does that fit into this conversation, Minister? And then we'll go to, I'll, let's go to you first, then we'll go to Josh. Go oh, first to Josh, and then I will comment. I think now it's better. Okay, Josh, uh, maybe you can bring us in too, because you're, you're hearing, you know, um, these domestic steps. And I, I think there's this two-pronged process of both domestic and sort of international cooperation that are closely linked. And if they don't work together well, then you have, you have holes. You can be great talk doing the external, but if you don't, if you don't do it at home, um, it's it's problematic. And I know you've talked a lot about the U.S. Treasury in particular. So, Josh, over to you. Yeah, sure. Well, well, well thank you for for um, the insightful remarks, Minister, and 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 for that question, Jonathan. I mean, what a great way to contextualize the historic, strategic importance of uh, efforts against uh, ambitious efforts against anti-corruption, like the ones that uh, Minister Kolikova is leading boldly on the front lines. Um, and I mean, you mentioned our like grand strategy and fitting together domestic and foreign <clears throat> policy needs um, together. So to like zoom out a little bit on that, the last time the United States really had a coherent grand strategy that was, you know, uh, that, that was consistent domestic and foreign was during the Cold War with containment of, of communism, which was sustainable because it also met our domestic political economy needs, particularly in the 80s and 90s when, you know, at home, a, a, a neoliberal deregulatory approach contributed to, to high growth, lower inflation, economic results and freedoms that Americans appreciated and became mainstream bipartisan consensus uh, the decade later in, in, in the Clinton years. But at the same time, tapping into the the market forces side of, of, of capitalism uh, presented presented in an attractive alternative model to to communism, um, you know, offering again growth and, and freedom that won over the hearts and minds in many countries. Um, it, similarly, honestly, to like what the what the minister was just saying about showing showing that you know e e even within a you know a post communist you know Visegrad four type of country that. You, you, this can be done. It can be accomplished. It, um, um, but again, then during the Cold War, it was about deregulatory neoliberalism. It's now the inverse of, of that situation, whereby our overall strategy has to be to lean into the other side of our model, well-regulated, clean capitalism under, under the rule of law. Internationally, like the, the, the biggest change that's driving that is that our authoritarian rivals are no longer organized as communists. They're not trying to win over hearts and minds of masses. They're kleptocrats, you know, stealing from their, their people to enrich inner, inner circles of, of cronies and, and oligarchs. So our natural strategic interest is to show that our system delivers better results for everybody at all levels, not just a few uh, at the top of, of the power structure. And so anti-corruption has to become a central pillar of our policy, um, both at home and, and abroad. And when I say at home, you know, similarly to the, the role that neoliberalism played in American political economy, right now fighting corruption, it so deeply resonates with Americans here at home, particularly those mired in a, a stagnating middle class, whether they've been told on the left, if that's because of a rigged system, or on the right, you know, by by Trump baselessly, you know, casting his opponents as crooked Hillary or, or the, like the corrupt Biden family, these things I don't even want to like repeat because they're conjured out of thin air. But the point is that they resonate with Americans. So actually, fighting corruption and producing results could be that new connective tissue that unites our foreign and domestic policy. It Minister, do you want to respond? And I and I did want to ask Josh, you just in the context of this this fight, which I know you can get in, you know, to sort of on more uh, on the global side, you know, countries like Slovakia, what role do you see them playing in this effort? Because I think uh, we have the minister's ear too, not only the, those that are listening in, but I, I think Slovakia 
um, is probably, you know, just sort of look as somebody who's worked in this space and countering corruption is, is, is a real uh, obvious uh, partner in this fight. Yeah, well, definitely, if we talk about the, uh, we may say, uh, uh, either national or international mechanism, mechanisms which are clearly preventive uh, to to fight against corruption, it means whatever we are talking about the lists of of people that are, um, how to say, on the blacklist as as those who misuse their functions and uh, uh, shouldn't have um, certain privileges as others. Uh, uh, I think it's, it's completely correct, like a uh, sign to say that uh, we don't want to have corruptive, corrupted people. So it means, uh, uh, well, corruption is a violation of... Uh, if we talk already about corruption, so it means it's it, it, it's it's really a rude violation of uh, uh, of the principle which are needed for society for the state. Why as well the people have credibility to the system. So if uh, somebody is misusing his function and it's it's corrupting. Uh, other and and uh, uh, comes to this corruption whole cycle. I, I think it's 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 very needed that it's nationally and and, and internationally uh, gets a kind of uh, sign that uh, we don't want it and that in uh, uh, in the democratic countries we have in this way the same values and uh, uh, it's. This is only the way how we can be effective. I don't know if, if, if this was something that that uh, you, you if you wanted to this kind of remark. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think we're you know, and I, if I'm fit, if I am fitting in in uh, yeah. on your ideas, I don't know. Yeah, well, Josh, I, I don't know if you want to you know respond to that, but I also we, we've got a few different questions to sort of related to these topics, but also connected to uh, the Biden administration's uh, proposed democracy summit. And I, I wanted, you know, to maybe help stitch together, you know, sort of these these topics that the ministers just, uh, just laid out, and then also bring in some of the ideas that, that you've talked about and how we can um, uh, commit together. And I'm, I'm, uh, Minister, it's not lost to that. That obviously the EU component to what you are are discussing is 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 critically com uh, important. We've got a number of questions sort of lined up here about some some domestic issues about whether Slovakia is actually playing a role, um, you know, working with others, uh, you know, across the EU on achieving effective reform. Uh, and how you feed into, I think these are all directly connected to the to this larger uh, to this larger fight that 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 Josh spoke about. Prosím, uh, teraz nám opäť odpovedať na všetky, alebo postupne po každej, alebo aká ich predstava? Josh, do you want to jump in? Yeah, sure. And 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 on the the question of specifically the the U.S. interest in. In, in, in Slovakia, you asked, like, what's the, what's the role that Slovakia has to play? And like, how does that comport with what I was saying on more of like a grand strategy, but like when, when it actually gets to the front lines, like the biggest thing that the United States needs and the, the new administration, I think, you know, has it's not kind of gotten to the point of like fully articulating, but I'm sure that they will. They've started to what they want and need. Um, it has been said, you know, not just from Europe, but in, in Europe, what do they want to see um, that suits kind of all of our interests together? Um, as it relates to this conversation, it's for this effort, this effort to succeed, to make it work, to show that it's, it's possible and produce tangible results. I mean, this government is essentially like a year ahead of us in terms of 
uh, you know, coming into power and trying to to actually generate results at the same time of a, as a pandemic, we're struggling with all of these same things. So first of all, need to see it succeed in Slovakia and have everybody everybody see that. And so, um, you know, w- whatever that means in terms of U.S. support and assistance, whatever form that could take, you know, that has to be swiftly forthcoming from the United States. It started today, I thought, it sounds like, based on what the minister was just saying, in, in, some, in important ways of, of showing whether it's with with you know blacklisting for denying visas of corrupt officials, foreign assistance, whatever it is, we should talk more about how the U.S. can be helpful. Um, but also, the other U.S. interest here is we just want to learn lessons of how like it's how it's going. There are a lot of things that um, that, that the minister is 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 grappling with that we are going to have to as well, and we're going to need to to learn from from those experiences. So one example is what you were you were asking about communicating. How do you communicate? this to the public. How is the Biden administration going to convince Americans, especially the half that didn't, roughly half that didn't vote for for this administration, that this administration didn't just talk about draining the swamp, but actually did it, right? That's a big project that we're going to have to, in the United States, work on. Um, another, you know, question that's tricky around all of this is how, how do you balance the need to, to bring justice to the, the cronies who benefited from the previous administration, potentially including, you know, not just judges, but even politicians themselves, with, on the other hand, the desire of any healthy democracy to avoid being seen as as persecuting its 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 political opponents. That's not to say that Slovakia is handling that wrongly. I don't think they they are. Um, but it's it's a question that any anti-corruption you know, regime is going to have to uh, come to grips with as we are in the United States. I mean today Cy Vance has got Trump's tax reforms and and like there's there's prosecution that's proceeding i'm sure that's a question that's very relevant in that and other contexts in the united states so lots of lessons to learn uh can i try to answer i so i, I was trying okay. to go through the questions i don't know what is now your expectations as well to the to the uh, time limit of uh so i, so uh, I think uh, our dialogue so yeah so i just went through it and i will try somehow to um to answer and if there is something not not uh, answer just okay. please uh ask him more um so definitely uh as far as the uh big reform of the justice we are we are in open dialogue the european Com- commission and uh definitely we are expecting a big uh material it mean financial help uh, uh from a european commission um in the framework of so-called recovery uh recovery fund uh where for example uh we expect uh as a support for the whole justice reform uh it's a package of about something more than 200 million euro now we are talking so generally so but, but, but it's all in the process so uh, uh so it is the support uh to help um to establish uh new centers of uh uh, the new court districts, as far as the first level courts and appeal courts, uh, it, it uh, concerns as well um, uh, a big support for digita- digitalization uh, of the justice, uh, including PCs, uh, including support for electronic file for the justice. So uh, definitely there is a kind of synergy uh now of 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 this timing uh, uh justice reform with this recovery fund from european commission but it's but it's really an open dialogue uh where the the parts of the justice reform is um something like divided into the small projects um and uh, we communicate with the european commission and and I see it very, uh, very optimistic uh, that this synergy uh, should uh, help us. Uh, as well, I have to say that um, the whole project of the justice reform started in, 20, uh, in 2016 with so-called uh, Commission of the Effective Justice, which is a commission by the Council of Europe. And uh, this whole cooperation between Minister of Justice of Slovakia that started in 2016 uh, actually is continuing until now. And for example, uh, 
I mean, they, the experts of this uh, commission, they develop a kind of audit report in 2017. According to this audit report, there were debates uh, with the judges uh, about, uh, we may say it was something like um, a starting point of the whole reform, where the discussion with the judges started. Uh, and during this discussion, the judges really understood that the reform is needed and this is really the way uh, for having more effective justice and, and uh, for having as well better conditions for them. So it started in 2016 and it is continuing until now. And we may say that the experts of CEPESH, uh, VR wisdom, like, um, like uh, I seem like my guides, with who we consult uh, the the whole uh, court map and um, uh, as well the implementation and as well the last days for example there were roundtables with key players uh, of this whole reform uh, uh, as well with the expert and it is very helping it is really very very helping so not only the the possibility to have this expert but as well uh, these whole projects is financed by European Commission so yeah. Definitely from this side, we may say it's not only um, mm, the help for Slovakia to be in the EU family for understanding that what are the, uh, uh, what are the rule of law principles, but uh, European Union really helped us. It was really helping us. I mean, it's, it's really support as well, the material support uh, to achieve uh, these goals as well for the justice reform. Uh, if you are asking about uh, uh, what are the major institutional structures that permit corruption uh, to exist in Slovakia? Oh, that's <laughs> not easy question. Um, um, it's a very complex uh, question, but I will, I will be more focused on, on justice and persecution. Um, we have really, I really believe that, uh, that there are very effective tools against the corruption is opening the system, the structures as well of the justice. So it means to have open selection uh, of, of judges, open selection of presidents of the court. So we may say uh, to, to, um, to spread whatever information there exists about the justice, uh, um, about effectiveness of the courts, uh, whatever data, but in a way that is comprehensive, uh, uh, it's needed to give people. Um, so I think this is really the way. And from, from this side as well, I, I think it's very well known as well uh, for all panelists and uh, those who participate in this debate. I definitely believe into the, into the uh, so-called um, open government initiative, which I see as an initiative that, uh, uh, that is motivating the government to open the doors, please, as much as it is possible, because this is the way that is really helping the country uh, to be transparent and uh, um, and to, to achieve the goals of the public service. So, I mean, uh, yeah, to have control and control is not possible without uh, information. So to open it uh, um, uh, from the own initiative of the government is the best way. Uh, I think this is really the best way, I think, uh, as a preventive tool uh, for whatever structure. So definitely prosecution and uh, justice system um, are the, the, mm, the structures where we have to open as much doors as, as it is possible. I think you. I think you hit most of the the questions and responses back, and and uh, you know, and uh, you know, one thing I, I I'm sort of struck. One I, one open government is is a is is an important conversation and promotion of it um, at all levels um, is essential. Uh, but what I'm I'm struck by too is is um, 
is sort of the conversation we're having today because it's so complex and it's got um, uh, multiple components to it. And, and as I'm thinking about this, the importance that as you do within the E level of, of justice ministers um, and uh, representatives getting together and thinking through this, providing adequate resources to be able to, to help carry out um, getting the public uh, involved and sort of uh, and sort of understanding what this is, and then sort of a long term commitment to these uh, to these values and ideals, which I think is something that that we worry about. And it goes to the heart of Josh's explanation of sort of where we were, where we are right now. Um, and some of these deep challenges. And I, I, one thing I think about, because I know we're, we're short on time, is um, hopefully, uh, you know, sort of getting together both, uh, you know, on the U.S. side with you and your colleagues, it would seem quite appropriate if you're going to approach the, the domestic, the global challenge of corruption that you need to bring together um, sort of uh, the domestic. And we know that Merrick Garland, I, I don't know if he's I don't know if it's uh, he's, who's going to be the new uh, new attorney general of the U.S. We also have a new uh, head of uh, of the Treasury Department, Janet Yellen. But I think it would be wise to to ensure that there is this these types of conversations between yourself and your 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 colleagues as well. In addition to uh, we were we were uh, lucky enough to host your foreign minister um, uh, back. Uh, several weeks ago, uh, where you know these topics also came up: the democracy summit, uh, Slovakia's role, um, challenges, regional challenges, global challenges, and and they all fit together. But but it really requires, I, I think, uh, both your leadership and then the opportunity, uh, Josh, when when you're looking at this to of finding of bringing together leaders of those that are, are responsible for the 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 domestic component. Of, of these reforms and judicial reforms um, to really to really get at this. And I, I think maybe it's something that we know, but maybe we don't spend enough time doing it. So I, I can see maybe in the future, I look at the crystal ball, not that you have a, you don't have a busy schedule already, but maybe, maybe, uh, maybe it's something that you would uh, consider hosting and offering to host uh, with American and European counterparts to help set the stage for what you know, for what the challenges and how to address them going forward, because I think we would all benefit um, from your wisdom and what you've been doing over the last year to help inform uh, what we we can we should be doing here. And I think there's a lot uh, in motion here that may also help inform what you're doing. Uh, but I, I I see that synergy, and I think sometimes we miss we miss we miss that connection when we deal with global issues. That um, that in this case, it's it's quite local. It's quite you know national, and uh, we 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 should not ignore this because I think your government is trying to uh, address challenges that maybe uh, both the U.S., the EU, and previous governments did not address uh, and and needed to. So it's it seems like it's a constant fight. Josh, do you want to add anything to? Because I want to. I know the minister's got to um, leave, and it was gracious enough to give us a few more minutes, and then. Josh, maybe give you a word, and then and, and Madam Minister, if I could come back to you for a final word, and then we'll close. Josh, over to you. Just that this is, you know, an, an honor to 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 share a stage with uh, with Minister Kolkov, who's leading these efforts. Like I said, on on the on the front line, it's an exciting time. Um, <clears throat> both, um, I mean, it's a, both a difficult time and an exciting time in in all of our countries. But as I mean, as in in yours, in the United States, we ourselves have just obviously gone through this process of of saving our own democracy on on the brink and as kind of we look to both continuing to address our our ails at home but also going global with support for for um, d democracy among partners and allies I know the Biden administration has said that anti-corruption is going to be priority one at summit for democracy there's, so there's going to be more on this we've got a dedicated un session on on anti-corruption in in a couple of months i like the idea that jonathan was just raising and um yeah look looking forward to continuing to see um the results that minister kolkova was was describing today and and, and hopefully her continued uh leadership on the world stage on these issues as well because they're so important to all of us thanks Josh, thank you, and and I also just encourage others to to read uh, several of the recent reports that you've written on this about the U.S. strategy um, and the things that 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 could and need to be done. 
because I think they're really uh, comprehensive and are feeding into uh, the, the policy debate here, but it's also to the larger international context as well. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Minister, can you, just the final word to you, and, and again, deep appreciation in the middle of, of COVID-19 uh, and challenges uh, in the country, um, you know, to, for, for us joining us, and I know you're in, you know, it's year one, but it's unlike any year one for a new government. And, and so I think we're respectful of that and understand those challenges, but maybe just some final words. And, and I hope you do take us up on this idea of um, maybe Slovakia playing that role of bringing together your counterparts so that, that there's a proper, um, proper uh, perspective going forward as, as people seek to address these challenges like kleptocracy and corruption. So minister over to you. Yeah. Uh, well, again, I, I, I would like to thank you for, again, I'm, I'm saying for possibility to have this debate because I'm, the, well, um, on one hand, the, these debates are, are not easy, not only for possible language obstacles, but um, to try to, um, to, to send you the feeling and the understanding of the challenges of the uh, of the real barriers or obstacles that we face here and especially really in this time of uh, of covid-19 and the pandemic uh, i think it's really difficult time now everywhere and plus well yes we would like uh, plus uh, to implement some very strategic needed reforms for the fight against corruption uh, but I see uh, that that it's really difficult time. People are nervous because we face all in, I would say, in uh, all the world. Uh, and uh, the situation that we are limiting the, the rights of people and uh, uh, trying to give them a um, new secure how to say um, ideas that uh, we will fight the pandemic and, uh, uh, and and I, I and I see and I feel as we're in the on the national level uh, uh, we face of course a, a lot of uh, uh, difficult questions um, as well from the public because everybody would like to to have the fight more effective that is against the pandemic and it all um, uh, gives you a lot, a lot of, I will say, nervosity. And on the same time, you want to make it um, in, uh, in the respect of rule of law. And this is tricky because you want to, to do it fair and transparent. And if you are in the stress, um, uh, it's not easy to do it, but I am persuaded that uh, as well in this hard time, uh, it's better to, to take the difficult way, uh, which we see that for the future and for respecting democracy and rule of law is the best way. Uh, and, and I think that's the, the best note to end on is that is that that you're that despite the challenges, you guys are moving forward. And I think it's a, a sort of an inspiration to others who are listening. We're thinking about this, that that despite all the obstacles, um, I think you said earlier that, you know, that, that there's no choice but to do this. Um, and uh, and I think these were struggles that we're seeing uh, here in, in, in Washington, um, as well as what you're doing right now. And so I think there's a lot of um, I think there's a, a lot of opportunity. Uh, Josh said excitement, I think, because I think there's a, a newfound energy, particularly in Washington, to tackle these problems. And, um, and I think the brush with, uh, uh, with our own democracy and where it took us and has taken us over the last couple of years has really influenced and will influence policy here. And I think as much as it's influenced what you're doing in, in Slovakia. And so again, you've been incredibly generous with your time and we've gone over. Thank you to those that have joined us, that have stayed with us throughout. Um, I have a feeling this won't be the last conversation uh, that we have. And I know GMF, through the work that Josh is doing and others, are keenly focused on, despite all obstacles, to move this uh, rule of law, 
uh, sort of the global efforts on combating corruption up the hill, working with government and then also civil society and other actors that share the same uh, same uh, push that you do right now in Slovakia. So um, you're not alone. And, uh, and I hope that we'll see uh, this broader uh, conversation with your counterparts, uh, which you guys already have within the EU, uh, be widened, that circle widened to other democracies that are, are doing the same thing right now. So with that said, on behalf of the German Marshall Fund, thank you to Karen Donfried, our president uh, of GMF, but also to the Slovak Embassy in Washington, who's been a, a, a great partner to work with on this conversation. And, and then both to you, uh, Madam Minister, and to Josh, thank you so much. And we hope you have a, a good rest of your day. And I know you're probably jumping back into the, the challenges that you were dealing with about an hour plus ago. So we, we, we wish you well, and also just for the health and safety of, of Slovaks as well. We, you know, we, we, this is one of those moments where we truly understand uh, what you're going through. And we hope that there's even uh, greater cooperation, both on the transatlantic side, on the on COVID-19 uh, as well, uh, and, uh, and, and sort of post-COVID recovery. So with that said, on behalf of GMF, thank you again. And we wish everybody a, a great rest of their day, whether afternoon or evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.